but he slipped going up the middle of glorious kick. Farmer from behind, he's got it. Number five holds a great pride of place in the football folklore of Geelong, but there is none bigger and there will never be anyone bigger than Graham Farmer. There was people coming to training to watch him in the vicinity of probably eight to 10,000 people. He cap captivated uh, Geelong uh, and he captivated football in the period of time that he, was, he was playing over here. Victoria into attack. His kick now goes towards centre half forward. Farmer's in that lot and Farmer's pulled it in as he playing an inspired last quarter. In the third quarter. Kick won't make the distance, but oh, it's oh, Farmer. Graham Polly Farmer didn't just play Australian rules football. He dominated the game and revolutionised it. He's the only player that I have ever seen since I... and I've watched the football since 1935, probably, uh, that has made an original contribution to Australian rules football. Right into the seat of Michael Perry and Farmer. Farmer gets it, hand passes to Mitchell. Mitchell gets a left footer and he'll start. He's favouring the other flank by the look of it, or good kick too. The players set themselves, up they go. No mark, that by Farmer. Farmer a long hand pass out here. He's looking for Farmer. Every time that I went out in the football field, I set my mind to be best on the ground and win the game. Well, in the period he was here, he was the, the best player in the competition by a mile, in my opinion. Um, not only was he skilled, he, he never fumbled the ball. Uh, it, it was a, an excellent kick, but he was uh, extremely quick over, over short distance, an explosive pace. He was, as I said, he's a big fella, um, somewhere near, nearly 16 stone, uh, can leap high, and uh, as, as well as that, he was extremely tough. And a lot of people underrate that. They think they see a, a skilled player running around the field that perhaps they're not quite, uh, you know, really tough as some of these other guys. But he was the toughest player in the competition as well. began for Polly at East Perth in 1953 and after winning seven club best and fairest awards he was spotted by Victorian talent scouts. In 1961 Bob Davis, Geelong's coach at the time, made a very bold prediction. Get me Polly Farmer, he said, and I'll win a premiership for you. They did get Polly and he did win a premiership in 63. Many believe they would have won in 1962 had Polly not been sidelined with a serious knee injury. Davis was the man who did the smooth talking and the leg work to lure Polly across the nullarbor. I said, would you like to come and play with us? He said, yes. I said, uh, would you want much money to play? He said, oh, no, perhaps a thousand pound a year. Well, a thousand pounds is like a million pounds then. And I said, oh, a bit. No, he said, a thousand pound. I said, is that really all you want? I'd have given him three times as much if he'd have said it. But, and he said, yes. I said, we'll shake hands on it. He said, yeah. So we shook hands. And that was just about it. There was a huge crowd the first practice match. We paid for Polly. There was an enormous crowd for the first practice match. And it was with great anticipation that we all went up to Carlton for the first match. And I can tell you, it was tragic to see him go down on that uh, goal square when he really hurt his knee. Even then he got up, finished the game, kicked five goals and got best on the ground with a knee that was terribly badly injured. Geelong officials were in shock. Their prize recruit from the West had broken down in his first game. His knee needed surgery and after that operation, his left leg would never be the same again. But testimony to the resilience and enormous talent of this remarkable athlete, Polly changed his game and played on. What people don't realise is that after his operation, he had to come down on his good leg. Now, you imagine in the hurly-burly of the ruck work and of going in packs and marking the ball, knowing that you had to come down on one specific leg all the time. I had a loose knee. When, in, in those days when you had cartilage operations, you didn't play. And I, I was the only one who was trying to play. Everyone else just stopped playing. And, uh, 
But what I did, I actually physically built my body up. I changed my style, and so I wasn't uh, flamboyant, I wasn't adventurous. I didn't do things if I couldn't control the way that I felt. And so I, I became probably a little more of a thug than I was in Western Australia. But it was Polly Farmer's influence on the game that put him way above his opponents. His use of the handball became a match-winning weapon. I realised that he made handball an offensive weapon. He used to leap up very high and handball the ball on the way down. 1967 was Polly's last season in Victoria. He returned home to finish his career with West Perth, leading the Cardinals, as they were then known, to two premierships, 69 and 71, which was his last year. A send-off a fitting one, a man considered a legend among legends. Twenty-nine years later, it named a freeway after him. They said they went over a lot of people and, uh, and they sort of kept coming back to me as being a, a successful person at East Perth as a player and also at West Perth and they thought, well this tunnel is running between East Perth and West Perth and it seemed like a good idea. And uh, me being the type of person who never says no, I, I was quite happy with their idea. You know. I'm inclined to hide my feelings and so, uh, so from the outside it's, you might think I'm taking it for granted but inside I'm very excited about it and uh, grateful and I also think I'm part of the public and that means that almost any person who is in the public has a chance of having something like this named after them, that's all. And, uh, and I guess it's whatever impact that they may have had on society. I'd say, there's the siren, and West Perth are playing in 1971, a great victory for Tony Palmer, playing his last game of senior football, and he goes out in a blaze of glory.